Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the Lean Six Sigma uh, input map. The input map is the second of four tools in the Lean Six Sigma qualitative root cause analysis. Those four, four tools are number one, the SIPOC. Uh, the second tool is the input map. The third tool is the CME matrix. Uh, and the fourth tool is the FMEA. Uh, and we have brief uh, uh, introductions to each of those. Plus, we have more in-depth tutorials, online tutorials uh, for you to really understand those. And, and all of those we have put together in, in a uh, root cause analysis uh, uh, online tool set. So uh, you're looking in at, at the screen here. This is the uh, input map, all right? Again, the input map is the second in four tools for that root cause analysis. Uh, and the input map is really to help us as Six Sigma practitioners to, to kind of fill out the core equation of Six Sigma. That core equation is y equals a function of x. Uh, you'll see here y equals a function of x1, x2, x3, xn. And, and I'll explain this. So uh, in our uh, previous modules, uh, that being the charter uh, and the SIPOC, the SIPOC is the first tool in this root cause analysis. Uh, in those two, in those two, we, uh, we define what the Y is, okay? And the Y is the, is the metric that we're trying to, to alter in order to improve the process. Uh, in the case of the SIPOC, we uh, identified many Ys, all right? Uh, no less than three. But these are the things or, thing, or things that we are trying to improve all right, in order to, to uh, you know, reach the end of our project, our Six Sigma, or Lean Six Sigma project. So that, that's our why. Uh, again, that's in a previous module. Now, y equals a function of x. We're, we're, gonna, we're not, uh, really not gonna talk about a function here. This comes later in, in uh, other tools like the CME matrix and the FMEA, but now we are in the process of understanding what our X's are, okay? What are, what are the, the variables that impact the Y, that cause variation in the Y? So let's say that my Y is um, uh, lead time to produce a report, all right? And, and I'm producing the, pretty much the same report every time, but there's a lot of variation around uh, the time it takes me to produce that report. All right, so the variation in, in my output, my Y, that report, is caused by variation in my inputs. Uh, that variation could be shifts, it could be uh, people, it could be sites. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that can go into that. It could be the fact that we don't have any standardized process. So, in this equation, y equals a function of x, we have to determine what those x's are. We have to define all the x's that we can because we're going to let Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma, and the tools of Lean Six Sigma help us to determine which x's have the most effect on the y because those x's are the ones that we want to improve and we want to optimize uh, in order to provide for a better output, a better y. So that leads us into the, uh, the input map. The input map is really there to help us understand what are all the inputs, all right? What, what green belts and really black belts as well do incorrectly in this is they, they judge inputs as to what they think has an effect. We don't care what you think has an effect and, and don't take that wrong. All right, I, I tell this to all my green belts that in Six Sigma, we don't care what you think. We're not here to understand what you think. We're here to understand what the data is telling us. All right, your job and your team's job is to identify 
as many X's as humanly possible. And if you think an X has no effect, it doesn't matter, put it down. Because I've seen many projects where there is an X that we think had no effect on the process. Uh, and, it, and, and we wouldn't have found it if we did not include it in this analysis. All right, so your job is not to determine whether an X is uh, uh, has a significant effect or not. Your job is to just identify all the X's. Okay, so the um, in, in the input map, the input map, uh, there's a number of steps and we'll go through these steps. Again, if you want to learn more about this input map and, and really uh, the detailed steps and how to understand what those X's are, uh, look at the uh, tutorial that we have. So we've got uh, four major steps for the input map. Uh, the first is the process steps. These process steps actually come from the SIPOC. All right, so they come from the SIPOC. So I'll take it back here and show you uh, SIPOC, something that we went over in a uh, earlier module. This is the SIPOC. You'll see the steps are set up, apply peanut butter, apply jelly. Okay, so if we go all the way back to the input map, you'll see those steps here. All right, and I'm actually have them auto populating. All right, so we have this step set up. Now we're gonna we're gonna peel peel the onion back. Now we want to see what that step is made of. All right, that high level step was what it's made of. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to define what the outputs are. All right, and this confuses people because they they say, well. Um, the outputs come after the inputs. We have to define the inputs and then what the outputs are of the inputs. All right, the inputs would be right here. But in this case, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not the case. We can have, we can have 10 outputs um, and three inputs. They don't correlate to each other. They kind of do, but the outputs come from the step. All right, so what are the, what are the measurable outputs that come from setup? All right, so from setup comes, uh, we have to have one 12 ounce jar of Jiffy uh, crunchy peanut butter. All right, that's in the setup process. Uh, one 12 ounce jar of Smucker's grape jelly. All right, so these are the individual measurable outputs that come from the step. Okay, come from the step. Once we determine what those outputs are, then, then we can move over to our inputs, All right? Our inputs, <clears throat> our inputs again, are, are not uh, uh, adjective, adverbs, uh, verbs, etc. cetera. These, these are neutral, okay? Uh, again, uh, and, and, and I say this because I, I, I just got finished teaching the uh, sidewalk module, but the inputs are, are neutral. They're, they're not a good sandwich maker or a, a, uh, a good setup area or a well-written standard or, or work instructions, right? They're neutral because they might not be, uh, it, it might not be a good setup area. Uh, the sandwich maker might not uh, have the right information or the right knowledge or the right training. So uh, these are nouns. And, and I usually tell my green belts to, to make these one to three word nouns, all right? Don't make a paragraph here because that, that'll, that'll kind of force you to uh, meet that neutrality. The more words you use, the more tendency you put, you'll, you'll put an adverb or a verb or et cetera, something that you shouldn't use. So uh, in this case, sandwich maker setup area, standard work instruction, consumer's requirements. These are all of the inputs that go into the process uh, step setup. And again, producing these outputs. All right, uh, a good rule of thumb in the inputs is if you have less uh, than 10 inputs, 
all right, I would tend to go back and say, have I really dive into this deep enough? Have I missed inputs? The best way to determine inputs is actually uh, to follow a concept called going to Gemba, going to the real place. Get out in the process. Take a notepad, you and your team. To, uh, get out there and really understand what's going on in the process. If somebody's using a pen, that's an input. Somebody's using a notepad and writing stuff down, that's an input. All right? Don't take for granted that that input is inconsequential because you might be shoot, shooting yourself in the foot by doing that because that, that input might be the most important input. I can tell you that many projects that I've been in uh, that an input was not defined, we later went back and found that input and said, wow, th this really was the most important thing. So uh, we, we talked about outputs, I'm sorry, about the step, uh, outputs and then inputs. Our fourth step is the um, type. Uh, what is the input type? And the input type can be one of four things, all right? It can either be a uh, NSOP, all right? Or a, um, it can be an SOP or it can be a uh, controlled or uncontrolled, or it can be an SLA. Okay, so we've got SOPs and SLAs. SOPs stand, uh, stand for Standard Operating Procedure. And you usually find those in manufacturing and transactional. Uh, SLAs are, are really more transactional, although there is quite a, quite a few uh, SLAs that, that can be pinpointed in manufacturing. But SLAs are, uh, you find these a lot in, in uh, IT uh, industries, or information technology, where we have a agreement uh, with a vendor to do a certain thing or to meet a certain requirement. And if they don't, then there is usually some kind of monetary detriment from that. All right, SOPs are just basically standards that are written uh, so that we follow that standard. Um, control and uncontrolled. Okay, they, these, these are a little bit uh, more, uh, and not difficult, but they, they have a little bit more meat to them. Uh, controlled, a controlled uh, input is one that we can make changes to on the fly. All right, so if I was mowing a lawn if my process was mowing a lawn, then in mowing that lawn, things that I could change on the fly could be the height of the cut. Uh, it could be the speed in which I mow the lawn. It could be the direction in which I'm going. All right, these things can be changed on the fly. I, I can make changes to them quickly. All right, uncontrolled are things that I can't make changes to uh, quickly in the process. So in that same mowing in the lawn, uh, I would say that uh, an uncontrolled variable might be the sharpness of the blade, all right? Well, I, I don't necessarily want to sharpen the blade while the lawnmower is running. I might lose, you know, some fingers. So I have to stop the process of mowing a lawn uh, and, and then start the process of taking the blade off and sharpening it, et cetera. So that's an uncontrolled process. Uh, a good rule of thumb is to always mark any kind of an operator as uncontrolled. We can't control operators. We can't control a person. What we can control, and, and a lot of people give me a funny look when I say that, what we can control is the environment in which that person exists. All right. we, we can't control a person. We can't make them do things, but we can control the environment in which they exist in. So again, we've got um, our first step uh, is listing the process step. Step two is the outputs. The outputs are from the step, not the input. Um, then we move over to the inputs. All right, and, and we try and be as concise as possible, identifying inputs, even inputs that seem inconsequential, uh, a lot of times are, are, are uh, they have some consequence. 
Uh, and then we have type. Type is, is the, the kind of, of the input. Type is very important because we might find out that our, our most important inputs might be uncontrolled inputs, which tells us that we might need to find a way to control those. Okay, and that's really important later on in, the, in our analysis phase. All right, so uh, this ends our brief introduction into the um, uh, input map. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay, uh, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. Um, I hope you have a little more understanding of the input map. Uh, we have a more in-depth uh, lesson uh, on the input map along actually with a certification uh, and that's on our website. So if you're watching this video directly from YouTube, you didn't go to this from, from uh, our website, but directly on YouTube, uh, I'll put the link uh, to that tutorial down in the description. Uh, if you're watching this video from one of our blogs on the website, uh, a link to that more in-depth uh, description or that, that more in-depth tutorial will actually be in the blog. So if you have any questions, uh, for me, please do not hesitate to contact me or uh, go on our website and, and, and find our contact number. Um, my email address is kclay at sixsigmadsi.com. Again, I will put that in the uh, description. And uh, I hope that everybody has a wonderful day.